Now, when we watch a movie or a TV show, our brains are at work, making sense not just of what we see, but also of what we hear. Cuiva Doyle's job as a Foley artist at Ardmore Studios is to recreate the soundscapes to immerse us in the moment. She joins us in studio, as does Seth Horowitz, who's a neuroscientist and musician joining us on the phone. Today, we're going to explore the science of perception and sound. And you're both very welcome to the programme. Um, we'll start off with you, um, uh, Cuiva, if you don't mind. Can you tell us a little bit about the art of, of Foley and what it is a Foley artist does? Um, Foley is the process of putting sound effects to film uh, TV ads and now uh, video games and we we put the sounds for things the physical things like the kisses and the s skin touches and the sound of uh, great big uh, ball gowns and um, handling of guns that kind of thing so not the, the not the wind in the trees and not the sound of an engine but why why do we need these sounds added in what, what's wrong with recording it when it's happening well, um, mostly on a shoot, the little microphones are under the collars of the actors' costumes and the priority on the day, on the day of the shoot is to get the dialogue that's key. And it's, if you're shooting a period drama and a plane flies overhead, um, it may look beautiful and be perfectly shot, but the sound is suddenly useless. So then you have to get the actors in and revoice all of the dialogue. And then you have to also create an entire soundscape for the voice to sit on. So um, it's your job to lie to the audience? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, like most films nowadays, it's in you know eighty, ninety percent of the sound is recreated completely. Wow, I didn't realize it was that high. I mean, I knew it happened, but I had no idea it was that much. In in the big budget Hollywood films, so it's it's up around that kind of thing. But in lower budget Irish films, you'd strive to keep a lot of the uh, location sound. And so how do you find out? Say, for example, someone wants to, the sound of uh, someone being shot with an arrow. How do you? recreate that because obviously you can't do that to a person and, and maybe punching them mightn't make the right sound. How do you explore that sound creatively to make sure that it's as accurate as, as you can get it? Um, well, we'd, um, you know, like you'd break it down and you'd have the sound of the of the arrow uh, being pulled back and the tension on the string and then you'd have the, the fire of the bow or of the arrow rather, the fire of the arrow and then as it impacts the body you'd break that down as well and you'd have the thud for the impact and then you'd have something viscous and then if it cracked a little rib you might put in a little broken cell little bit of celery or something so you'd build it up in layers and um with film you you want to make it more dramatic so often we take a license and uh push the boundary of the sound a little bit f in aid to tell the story a little bit better yeah and and uh and i suppose that's the beauty of it and, and people may think that you know Film is is all about the visuals and so much money spent on on special effects. But uh, if you perform a very simple experiment, turn down the sound and watch any movie, and you'll have no idea what's going on, and it loses all of its impact. But turn off the picture and listen to the sound, and you're really there, right there in the film. Yeah, like um, it's a sound is a really persuasive tool, and um, you know the pictures might tell us what's happening in the film, but the sound will tell us how to feel about uh, what we're seeing. Um, yeah. So we're going to have a real treat because Cueva is going to now recreate some of the sounds uh, that she would do for movies. I think Cueva has um, celery in your hand. Is, is that what, the, <laughs> what what we were talking about there? The sound of broken bones. Is that what we're recreating? Yeah, like it's um, it's really the the marriage of picture and sound uh, where f Foley really comes to life. It's it's the magic between the two. Right. So in an, it's a, this will be an isolated bone break. But if we had, uh, if we were projecting the visual as well, we would give you that. Uh, so we, we will imagine, uh, we'll imagine someone getting their uh, bones <laughs> broken and then All this right. happens. We'll go for it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's perfect. That's exactly well, what it does when, sound like. When we, um, for if it's internal inside the body, we'll put um, this is cannelloni pasta. It's a little bigger, but we put it inside our my mouth, inside my body for a nose break and something like that. So I'll just give you the difference between a muffled kind of a sound and the the brightness. So I'll just break it down so it fits in my mouth. <laughs> Stab myself. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> you so really you have to get into it, don't you? It's, it's, it's spitting out pieces. You can't of, be of shy in Foley. Pasta. Yeah, you just have to. So get, I, I, get whether into you have it. your mouth open, or your mouth closed, it completely changes the sound. Yeah, it's like there's those subtle differences um, 
are the thing that sells the sound. Uh, it, it sounds kind of uh, minute, but it's often the minute detail that actually sell the sound. Well, this every horror film you've ever seen and heard would have would have this uh, would more than likely have a wet chamois. Um, so I'll just give you a little bit of the. Is this microphone on? This one here. Yeah. Okay. And take it off of that. So it's we record with really uh, super sensitive microphones to get all the detail of the little bubbles and gurgles that happen in that cloth. But um, like just like Seth was saying there, for um, for a heart like when we have a, a gate open or something like that, but it's in a genre like like a horror. Yeah. and a gate opens, we would choose props that would be a little darker or have a, sin a more sinister sounding uh, sound. Sound, yeah. So I'll just show you. I have a, here I have a, a water phone. Okay. And um, What's a water phone? This is a kind of a, um unusual looking instrument. And it's a, it's like a brass vase with random sized rods sticking out of it. And you play it with a bow and you put water in the bottom and when you swirl it around, it can kind of warble and uh, it's it's kind of interesting, but it's also weird. Uh. Yeah, you can totally hear that. I mean, that is the sound of horror, isn't it? Really. So it's it's a uh, kind of got a a, a a weird. You can't understand. You don't really know why it's. But upsetting. Who, who came up with this idea? Like, who made that horror? Because that is the sound of a creepy moment in a horror movie. Who who made that? Um, I bought that in a really amazing uh, shop in Toronto called Museum, and the guy there collects all these kind of uh, unusual instruments from all around the world. So that's where I got that. But I uh, I, don't, I don't actually know who made it. Continuing on from that, really, um, you know, we have to come up with ways of uh, recreating sound uh, for uh, things that you can't get into a studio. And uh, like a horse would be would be one of those things. And we <laughs> we used to use the coconuts, the um, you know the classical python coconuts. Works quite well. And it did. You know what it did. And then um, we got a, a a job Game of Thrones that had lots of really menacing thundering horses hooves and the coconuts just weren't cutting it and just a little bit too jolly just there was just an element to it they were too light didn't have the weight and um and it's it, just an extension of that in, in, in of the sound thing is is like even though it's subtle it made it made all the difference so these are actually horses feet and they they have the shoe on them um so you can hear occasionally you can hear the shoe hit a stone and those little moments of reality sell the whole thing uh, just little things like that and so we'd put a microphone, bury it in the dirt, deep down in one of those little egg microphones. And then we'd have another microphone on the top and we'd have a blend of both to get the resonance neat that we would look for. So this is now just in a, in a, a basin. So it's So we'd like <laughs> we'd add awesome. a little, you know, you'd add a little bit of little bit of bridle, and then you'd also add a little bit of bending of the leather. The leather, and you'd layer it up, and um, and you'd you'd buy it, you know. Um, luckily, in sound in film, we don't have to always be uh, make the actual sound. I mean, if our ears and brains expected us to have the exact sound, we'd be in trouble in the film business. Um, and luckily, you know, even in a visual, we don't need to have films to be linear like real life. Our films would be really, really long. So um, so we can use that to our advantage and uh, and yeah, put the illusion of the sound and it, and it can work. what I'll do is the the screeching tires kind of it's it's fun because you could do this at home okay great and um, so that. if you get the hot water bottle out of the cupboard yeah. and blow a little puff of air in I'll just move up here 
And every every film you've heard and seen since the 60s have used this oh, for really? car chases. Yeah. Oh, I love the so, getting the insiders track on. Somebody uh, removed the lid on the <laughs> So that you just put a little bit of um, little puff air of air. And So <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> So the, the, the beauty in it is that you can watch the movement and cadence of the car and recreate it precisely uh, by just watching and mimicking the motion of the car. So to try and do so, that... So, so when you're seeing the car move left, you're dragging the, the thing Yeah, we're quickly, watching or, it yeah. and then you, you move precisely in the same motion as the car. And so it sits in in sync perfectly. So then you really buy it. If you were to try and record car screeches and just sort of sit it in, it's a, it's a harder sell. Absolutely brilliant. Um, thank you so much for joining us, uh, Cuba Doyle from Ardmore Studios.